Welcome to Build It, Brew It, Drink It. This episode, our first episode, uh, we're going to build a London Brown Ale. The London Brown Ale uh, is a historic style, according to the current BJCP regulations. Uh, in 2008, it was uh, Category 11B, I believe. You'll see that in some notes coming up. Uh, currently, Category 27. It's a light beer three to three and a half percent ABV loads of flavor loads of color um, historically second runnings from a from a porter um, and so the style um, with the advent of brewing techniques and you know it just kind of fell out of favor there are still production London ales man's is still around uh, obviously the technique has changed these are not generally now Partigal batches. It's not a second running. It's a beer all unto its own. Uh, so we're going to build a London Brown Ale. Now, there's two reasons. Number one, um, the, the malt bill is very simple to, to come up with. Number two, um, it's a great traditional style. Uh, and it's a beer that a lot of people like because it's not intensely bitter. It's not huge alcohol. It's not an imperial. It's not a double IPA that'll pucker your face and put you on your back at the same time. It's an easy drinking, nice, flavorful beer. And that makes it a great beer for this series. Uh, working with Red Shed Malting, uh, it's also a recipe that we're able to make with the entire range of, of malts that Red Shed produces, from their base grains to their specialties uh, and even into their roasted grains. So let's get into building uh, a brown ale. Uh, first and foremost, as I said, uh, we're looking at uh, category 27a now it was 11b a couple of years ago uh, as you can see up here uh, you're probably not going to be able to read it but that's okay uh, again light on the alcohol 2.8 to 3.6 abv um, less than 20 ibus so it's the, the the bitterness is quite restrained and then color wise on the darker side so it is a dark brown ale but really um it's not a not a stout or a porter it's not that kind of heavy so let's pop over to beersmith and let's start putting something together so for this recipe we are going to rely on a template that i use now i use beersmith there are other tools uh whether you use uh brew toad or uh, there are dozens um of really really good um really good tools but i use beersmith it's inexpensive uh it's an industry standard lots of people use it um great tool so what i've got is i've got a template recipe uh that i use when i'm building a new recipe um and this template recipe has my water profile it has the basic additions that i'm going to put into every single beer i make uh, Camden tablets for the water because I'm using tap water. Uh, firm cap to make sure that I don't forget on brew day to, to firm cap because if I don't, I will boil over because I am inattentive and this helps keep me on track. Uh, whirl flock at the end of the boil. Obviously want to make sure I do something to help find the beer so that it comes out clear, uh, which I did not do with this, although this is getting much clearer. Um, this is one I did a few weeks ago. Hmm. Dry side light IPA. Um, put some stuff in the notes. Uh, so let's get started on this. First of all, I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save as, and I'm going to give it a new name. Uh, this beer, um, I thought about this. It's not super fancy. This is a brown ale from a red shed. Hey, red shed. All right. So here's <coughs> our new beer right there brown ale from a red shed now in order to get this beer off the ground we're going to set it for a london brown ale by style now i've got in beer smith i've got the um the 2015 number set up now we're going to start basically building the beer now characteristic of the brown uh typically caramely toffee like flavors occasionally some coffee and a little bit of roast flavor um, given the grain that uh, we're working with uh, i think we can come up with a pretty good approximation of those flavors from the uh, from the specialty grains 
So in this case, we're going to add uh, some grain. And the grain we're going to add first is obviously our base malt. Now the base malt we're going to work with is a two row. Um, modern two rows uh, convert really well, which means to say that uh, they have powerful enough enzymes, uh, even in a two row, to convert all of that starch to sugar. In a, in a beer that's really heavy on specialties, and in some brown ales, um, particularly London brown ales or southern brown ales, uh, you use a lot of specialty grains. And those specialty grains don't always have what's called diastatic power. Um, it's the, the uh, enzymatic power necessary to convert all of that sugar or, or all of that starch to sugar. Most modified or, or, or most two row now is is fairly powerful and in a in a reasonable recipe we're going to build to a five gallon or a 6.5 gallon in my setup in this recipe um but we'll upscale it to a 10 or a 12 gallon for brew day uh not to worry about that the the nuts and bolts won't change uh just the absolute volume we're producing so we're building this um as a five gallon recipe for six and a half gallons because that way uh it gives us some breathing room on the mash side it gives us some breathing room on the trub side and it gives us some breathing room on the fermenter and the process side um but otherwise grain percentages uh hop percentages should keep you in the ballpark if you want to replicate uh, this recipe. So first of all, we're going to go with uh, probably Bentley, which is, I think, Redshed offers three grains um, as base malts. They offer Bentley, Newdale, and Synergy. Bentley and Newdale are two different uh, variations. Um, uh, sort of the, not species, that's the wrong word, but they're different They're different variations of, of, of two-row barley. Synergy is a third that they offer. Synergy is, is very much a um, a grain suited for uh, large capacity production and particularly really high specialty malt production because it has uh, really high uh, diastatic power. Um, it also happens to be very low protein and low beta glucan, which uh, means that it will produce ultimately clearer beers. For us and for home brewers, not a big deal. So we're going to go with Bentley. Let's go Bentley. I like Bentley. What the heck? Flavor's probably virtually identical. Uh, there may be slight differences between that, uh, you know, you might notice in a 20 hectoliter brew house, but you're not going to see it certainly as a home brewer. Uh, so let's go Bentley. I, I, we got a really low ABV on this beer, so I don't want to go crazy. I'm going to set it for a couple of kilograms just to get us started. Um, next up, we're going to need to get some of the darker colors that we need for a London Brown Ale, as you can see. Um, in this right now, the estimated original gravity, I don't know if this will show up or not. Yeah, there you go. Uh, gravity's really low for this beer. I've used really low, but color um, is a big thing. We've got to get this color in here. Um, and in order to get this color into that green zone, we need some darker stuff. That's where that flavor's coming from. So let's get in. First, let's get in with some, some probably some, some, uh, some darker malts. So uh, let's go with the, probably the 300 um, SRM chocolate uh, that we've got at our disposal right now. Uh, that chocolate malt, uh, we're gonna put in, we'll put in a half kilogram for now. I know we're going to change some of these numbers because they just won't add up. Uh, we also want to get some nuttiness, um, some some more spicy character. We can get that from an amber. Um, an amber um, is a little bit lighter, about 80 SRM, I think. 50 SRM, there we go, um, which will give you more reds. Uh, so if you're building a red ale, the amber malt is great. Uh, again, we're going to set that for 0.5 kilograms just to get it in here, and then we'll tweak it after. Uh, we're going to add some more grain. Last grain we want it. We need we need to get some biscuit um, because this beer was traditionally made with English pale ale malt, which is a little more biscuity than plain two row base malt. We've got to get that flavor from somewhere, so we're going to put some biscuit malt in here. Uh, the biscuit malt again. Um, it's an 18 SRM, which means it's just slightly roasted, um, or slightly kilned, rather. It's not roasted. Two-row is germinated, malted, and dried. Kilned malts are heated, and then they start to brown. And then, depending on how brown they are, determines the flavor. And so taking them out um, at certain points will change their character. 
Uh, biscuit malt is kind of like a, it's almost like a toasted, a lightly toasted. Same way bread and toast don't taste the same. Two row, which is just dried, kiln, you know, kiln dried and then put into sacks. And a specialty malt like biscuit malt, they taste different. Um, this particular biscuit malt, you may recall, we were sniffing out of a bag um, and uh, leaching into some grain alcohol to um, get a feel for the flavor a few episodes ago uh, in Before the Boil. I'll put notes to that down below. So let's add some biscuit malt. Uh, again, I'm going to add just a half kilogram to get it into the recipe, and then we're going to tweak the numbers. Uh, so right now we've got our two row uh, base malt. We've got amber malt, biscuit, and some chocolate. The chocolate's going to give us that dark color. Biscuit and amber are going to give us that flavor. And our numbers are surprisingly okay. Huh. Interesting. That's with two kilograms of base malt, half kilogram of amber, half kilogram of biscuit, and a half kilogram of chocolate. Now what numbers aren't quite right? Wait a minute. That's That can't be. That's not possible. The color, 28. Estimated AV, ABV of 3.5. Even the gravity's close. It can't be that easy, can it? But it can. Now what we need to do is decide where we want that flavor profile to go. Uh, first and foremost, let's make sure we set up our mash information right. I just want to make sure it's done. We're going to do this as a, uh, as a single infusion. Uh, full body batch sparge. Now, a full body means we're going to be mashing at a higher temperature. Batch sparge means we're going to be doing a full sparge. So, we're going to be draining off the mash and then refilling, getting that grain all wishy washy in warmer water and then flushing that down into the kettle, too. Uh, so, based on this, um, we've now tweaked it a little. Now it's a 3.1%. That higher mash temperature is going to reduce the amount of alcohol. That gives us a little more breathing room. Uh, we're right on the money for color, though. What a what a great fluke to be so bang on on the color just with raw numbers. I know I don't want that much chocolate. Um, chocolate malt, you don't want to be using 15%. It's too much. Um, but I do know that we're going to change our color. If I take that down to 250 grams instead of 500 grams, uh, for you non-Canadians, non that's about a half a pound, <clears throat> the difference in color is notable. Um, all of a sudden, we've dropped down just about right off the map. So that means I'm going to want to add a little more of that amber to get the color I want back. It's going to start to do it. going to start to do it, but it might not be enough yet. Uh, we may be able to bump up, may be able to bump up the chocolate a little more. I'd be hesitant to go beyond 10%. That gets, even going to, to, to 350 grams, uh, putting an eighth of a pound back in, that gets us to almost 10%. That works out okay. Now I'm a little worried about that amber at 20%. Uh, I don't want this to come out like a nut brown. Um, so I think what I need to do is drop that amber a little bit back to, let's go, maybe 650 grams. And then we can up the, the biscuit in percentage. Um, we can up the biscuit to 750 and then we'll just tweak down the base malt. We could tweak down the base malt to get us, uh, back to a little bit more practical, um, a little more practical a number. We're now into the into the, the sort of the butter zone of that twenty two to thirty five SRM, and a twenty two is pretty dark. I mean, this is this is about a this this beer was I think about like eight or nine SRM. Oh, that is the kind of head retention you can get on very very low alcohol beers. Um, this is actually a 4% IPA, and uh, yeah, not a problem. You can get head retention. Uh, oh, by the way, this was one grain, and it was pure two-row. So don't let anybody tell you that you can't get head retention with nothing but two-row. Possible. 
Okay. Um, let's see here. Yeah, let's take let's take that Bentley down. I mean, it's only up to three point four percent. That's not so bad. <sighs> let's see here. So this basically says the biscuits in the front at twenty percent to the grist, amber's at seventeen percent, um, chocolate malt. I still think that might be a little high, but I'm willing to go with it. Um, the beauty of building a recipe and brewing it is that you learn from that process. This is the first time I've built a brown. Um, and as a result, I expect it to be broken. It's going to be broken. It'll still be a great beer. It just may not be exactly what I'm shooting for. Um, that's a learning process that's worth taking. And at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure we're going to have a beer that's enjoyable, even if it isn't perfect. Not necessarily the same thing. We got to hop this thing. So let's talk hops. Now, when we talk about uh, the London Brown Ale style, the style guidelines talk about lightly hopped. Uh, they, they should be traditional English hops. Uh, so Fuggles or, or uh, East Kent Goldings, for example. Um, but that doesn't always necessarily align with what you want to drink. Um, I, I don't mind Fuggles. I'm fine with East Kent Golding, but I'm not a big Fuggles guy. I've done a few Fuggles beers. They're a little more earthy. I want something that's a little, a little brighter, maybe a little more floral, a little more herbal. So I'm going to go with East Kent Goldings, but I'm also going to go with Tradition. Now, Tradition is a Hollertau, sort of middle for a kind of feel. So it's very similar, but not exactly like a, like a Fuggles, but it, it'll work in this case. Um, I've also got it in inventory, so that's a good thing to work with. Uh, if you don't have the hop you want, sometimes you can adjust the recipe or change the vision for the recipe a little bit to give you the flavors you want or, or another option. So let's add some hops. Now, we do not want much for hops. This is a very, 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 very lightly hopped style. No more than 20, S, uh, no more than 20 IBU. Uh, and that's a lot of flavorful grain that we've got. Like we've got 40, 45% of the grist is specialty. So there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of flavor in there. So let's look at, I'm only showing you uh, what I've got in inventory right now, which is a ton of citrus and Columbus. Well, that's not going to work. Uh, I've got some Goldings. I've got some Hollertau Blanc. That's a possibility, but it's a bittering hop. It's an 8% eight, an 8 alpha acid hop or a 9% alpha acid hop. Uh, not so much for aroma, but I do have tradition and I've got tetanine. I think we're going to go with tradition in this case. So I'm going to add some tradition to this. And let's also add some East Kent Goldings. Uh, I think that's super important to get both. Now, how do we want the Goldings and Tradition to be spaced? Do we want them to be all aroma? Do we want them to be uh, pure bittering hop? The style calls for a really light hopping, and that hopping should be... It's not intended to be an aromatic hoppy beer. It's intended to be a malt forward, slightly sweet caramel and toffee beer. So that says to me, hop aroma is secondary. The hop is there as a bittering agent and it is there as a preservative. So we're going to load these up a little earlier. If, if this was an IPA, I'd be doing one blast of, of big bitter up front and then moving all of that aroma to the end in few stages, usually in an IPA, I do a 15 minute, I do a five minute, and then after whirlpooling, I'll chill to 160 and then hammer it again uh, in the kettle as I'm chilling the beer. So for this particular beer, we don't want to do that. We want these hops in there to bitter, maybe get a little flavor out of them. So what we can do is we can space these out. Uh, we can do these two as I don't know, let's say 15 grams at 60 minutes um, of each uh, Goldings and Tradition, because they're both around the same. They're both a, um, a low alpha acid hop. Uh, and right there, already our bitterness is off the scale. 
That's with a half of an ounce of each. So an ounce total at 60 minutes is too much. So let's space these out. What happens if we go to 45 minutes? Uh, 45 minutes on both might just bring us back uh, into, that, into that zone. Uh, uh, we're close. We're much closer there. So what if I do the EKG now at 45 and I move the tradition to 15? What happens then? Boom. Puts us right in the zone uh, at a 16.5. Now that's a total of one ounce of hops in a 60 minute boil with one addition at 45, one addition at 15. The hop is there to support the beer and no more else. It's not there for aroma. I mean, sure, you'll get a little bit, but it's there to bitter out, to, to, to help offset uh, the sweetness of those grains and to preserve the beer. So right now we are sitting at a, a, a effectively an on style London Brown from the recipe. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be perfect. It might be too chocolatey. It might be too... Um, uh, too spicy or too sharp with that amber. Uh, maybe the biscuits, maybe it's too much biscuit. We don't know yet. Um, the amber malt will give you um, that nuttiness. So in a nut brown, often it's an amber uh, and then the crystal malts. The crystal malts give you the caramels and then the amber gives you the nuttiness. In, in place of crystals in this recipe, we're using the balance of the chocolate malt and the amber malt. Now, Red Shed's chocolate malt um, is a very interesting chocolate malt. It has a bit of caramel in it. It has some coffee in it. Um, and it has a little bit of chocolate. But it does sort of lean toward the, the caramel toffee side. Um, especially if we mash it sweet, uh, which we're doing with that full-bodied mash. Um, Crystal malts are an interesting thing, and crystals are, they didn't come into being until uh, basically the end of the Second World War. That's when crystal malts really started to show up. That was also the point at which the London brown style, the Southern uh, brown style, stopped being the favored style, if that makes sense. Uh, prior to the Second World War, uh, this was sort of the standard. Uh, and there were no crystal malts. There were none of these really super crazy modified grains. Uh, so this is probably truer with some biscuit and some amber uh, and a chocolate than it would be to do it with um, a crystal, which is a typical behavior. Um, typical browns are lots of crystal, and then you'll use something like a biscuit or a pale malt uh, to get your biscuit and, and nut flavor in there. Um, in addition to the caramel. So we're going to do this sort of old school, I guess. That's maybe the way to look at it. Um, so again, we've got our water, some two-row Bentley. That's going to be two kilograms of our grist, 750 grams of biscuit, 650 of amber, 350 grams of chocolate malt, just to give it that darkness and add a little of that richness. We got some Camden in the water. I can't get that to work right. For whatever reason, it won't let me add it to the water before the boil. But Needless to say, it's in the garage. It's in the water right now. Uh, firm cap, uh, just to keep us from boiling over because that happens. Uh, East Kent Goldings at 45 minutes and Tradition at 15 minutes. Now, as I said, we're going to step this up on brew day. So it'll be 4 kilograms, 1.5, uh, 1 1.3, uh, and uh, 700 grams uh, of those grains. Um, and we'll be using an ounce of East Kent Goldings and an ounce of Tradition uh, to kick this thing off. But that is basically the recipe. So this now is our uh, this is our roadmap to building this London Brown Ale, low alcohol at 3.4 percent ABV, 24 SRM, so a dark but not outrageous. It's not going to be opaque. 16 and a half IBU bitterness, so it's not going to be a palate smasher. It's going to be a sweet, drinkable beer. Uh, we're looking at an original gravity estimated about 037. Uh, so our first runnings are probably going to be like 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, and then it'll taper down to, you know, that, 
I don't know, 3.6, and then as we boil, it'll bring it up to 3.7. So fingers crossed, we'll have five gallons of deliciousness uh, tomorrow at the end of this. Once we have finished the brew day, uh, we'll be posting that video up. And then, most importantly, once it has finished fermentation and it has been kegged, uh, we will be uh, tasting this beer with you uh, so that you can see the result of this effort. Um, and it'll also give, it, you know, give you a chance to see some tasting notes on a recipe we just did that you can then take and turn into your very own. Uh, so that is it. Brown ale from a red shed. That's the first recipe. Unbuild it, brew it, drink it. Cheers. Thanks to our sponsors, Red Shed Malting, uh, out of Penhold, Alberta. You can find them at, you can find them at redshedmalting.com. They do sell online for home brewers uh, through several uh, online stores. You can find it on their website. Uh, and also, obviously, for commercial brewers, hey, give them a phone call. These guys ship out pallets all the time. And if you're not using it, why not? Um, look forward to Brew Day. Uh, for this recipe. Uh, hope you join us for the next episode and uh, keep your glass full and your smile on. Cheers. <laughs>